Hey there, I'm Russ Paul, and you're joining me on the Sonic Scoop channel. We're going to do a little demonstration of the effects rack in Sound Toys. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a little lesson in uh, how to do the dotted eighth trick that everybody does. We're going to start out by recording a little bit of music straight into the computer, and then we're going to manipulate it with the Sound Toys effects rack. But first off, we're going to look over here at my Rat's Nest pedal board, which I have to use every day at work. We're not going to use any of that. We're not going to hook it up. I'm going straight from the steel guitar into the computer. And I'm going to do a sort of melody at 100 beats per minute. And I'm just going to play straight eighth notes into it. And when we get a bit of that recorded, then we're going to go over and use the Sound Toys rack. And we're going to... Uh, make some fun sounds with it. So it's a little experiment and it's a bit of a parlor trick. So first off, I'm gonna start out with the, it's 100 beats per minute. And I'm gonna be in uh, A, I guess C major. And I'm just gonna play. Uh, and then I'm gonna add some chords to it. do that again. Now we'll do like an arpeggio. Arpeggiate. And that's what we're putting into the computer. And now we're going to uh, dig into the software. All right. Well, now we're going to start having some fun. First off, I'm just going to play a little bit of what we have, which is dry. I put just a little reverb on a reverb send. Actually, I'm using the, the little plate from Sound Toys, which is a nice reverb. And I'm kind of fussy about reverb, so... Anyhow, this is what it sounds like naked. The first thing I want to do is do what I would normally do with a volume pedal, just wah, 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 taking the edge off the front of the note. Well, you can do that through the tremulator here. So I've got the tremulator up, and I found a, a, a preset called Premiere. And when you put that in, And then I just uh, started messing around with the feel here. It says rush and drag to get the timing so it feels good. See there, it doesn't work. And there, it's nice, got a nice throbbing sound. So we're gonna use that. So then what I do is I just go down here to save as. Uh, let's see, I'm putting my initials in front. RWP, and then I'll put a number at the end of it. I'll put number two. That way I know what preset I got it from, but it's also one of my own. So now I save it, and then I can just look here and go up to user, and there it is. All right, our, our next move down the rack we're going to go the, to the decapitator. And uh, the decapitator is, I think, just a sophisticated distortion device. I, I, uh, I have to tell you that I've never read any of the manuals or anything for any of this stuff. It's all pretty intuitive. And I've had the Sound Toys stuff for maybe two, three weeks. And I actually just hunkered down for about two days and messed around with this. So... It's all pretty intuitive, uh, and the decapitator is is subtle. This is, this is without it. 
This is with it. It's just a slight bit of harmonic distortion. I use harmonic distortion a lot. You can use it crazy if you want. You can turn up the drive. Or bring it back. And that's about a good spot right there for me. It just adds a little bit of... Uh, 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 it's like a tube distortion, and it helps widen a sound, it kind of to build a sound. By itself, it's, it's, it's not that great sounding, but when you're building another sound, it'll get masked over. It actually kind of helps compress the sound a little bit, and it just adds a width to the sound. So I like using a little bit of harmonic distortion. So we're going to add the decapitator. I started out with the beefy G preset, and then I modified it a little bit, mostly with the drive. And uh, then I saved it with my initials on it. So that's the decapitator. Okay, now we'll get to the fun part. We're going we're gonna to do what I talked about earlier. We're going to do the dotted delay. So basically, we have our tempo set at 100 BPM. All of the stuff in the effects rack is timed. It's all synchronized with the clock. So uh, what we're going to do is a dotted delay. Basically, we're going to go here, uh, says there, eighth note, and then dot. So I can go to note, and that's eighth note. Uh, you can toggle up and down, 16th, eighth, quarter. We'll go to eighth note, and then dot. And that's the eighth dotted. No feedback. Basically, what we want is we want a photographic image of each note we play. So if I play, duh, it's going to, a, a dotted eighth note afterwards, it's going to go the same amount, duh. And so it's like you're playing two notes, but actually you're only playing one. The delay is playing the second one. And so when you play eighth notes, then you, then you get this skipping dance. So anyhow, so we've got it set on studio tape, which is, uh, a non-affected delay. It's just a it's a very accurate delay of your original note. We've got it set to uh, dotted eighth. No feedback, and we'll play around with the mix a little bit. So here's what it sounds like before, and now we'll kick it in. Pretty cool. Now we'll play with the mix a little bit. There's without. go way too far but right there get a really real nice sound kind of sounds like eddie van halen it uh, can make a guy like me sound like a genius sometimes so there you go all right that was a lot of fun with the echo boy that made it a whole new ball game and now we're going to take it a notch up with the filter freak now i have no idea what the filter freak really does but I just go through the, the presets, and just toggle through. I'll play the track and just toggle through presets until something sounds good to my ear. Then I'll tweak it a little bit. So I found something in the, uh, it's called the Drum Processor 1. So uh, a lot of times when we're doing something like this, I like to go for rhythmic things. So look into the drum section, even though for it's a guitar, look into the drum section. That's where all the cool rhythmic stuff is. So anyhow, I found this preset, then I tweaked it a little bit, and the sound goes from this to this. Which is cool, which adds a really nice percussive element. So the only parameter I messed with was the mix. So this is without. And at about uh, 10 or o'clock is good. If you get over here, it's too much. So anyhow, so try all the different presets, but that's one I like. That's the filter freak. Very cool. All right, it's time to put some frosting on all of this, and we're going to use the crystallizer. I believe it's some kind of a delay-based device that slices up into little bits and just adds interesting, uh, cool sounds. I just scrolled through a bunch of presets till I found something that was close. It was called Wet Pad. So I put my initials in it and a number, and now I can find it. And it goes from uh, this, this, 
little drama in there. I'll solo it up with the initial. There we go. Just mix it in there carefully about uh, 10 o'clock. Then we'll take it off solo here. And there we go. Okay, that I think is the whole shooting match. We've, we've used up the rack. I've had a lot of fun and uh, we came up with a new sound. And I encourage you to try this at home. Uh, no one gets hurt. Just keep messing around with the, the knobs and the presets. And it's, it's a very fun device. And you can do all your playing up front so you don't even have to concentrate on playing. You can just let the computer do the work. So I'm going to give you a little before and after. Um, I'm going to hit the bypass here. This is what it sounded like before. Pretty dismal, kind of boring. And now we'll kick in the, the whole shoot match. There we go. I like that a lot better. 